dig up some sand. Sand has to go inside and fill it up to here. Like sand. Like sand. Yeah, sand. Yeah, you know, scoop it up like that and just put it in there. But you just have to watch. Bring it right up to about the same level. Here. Here we have a mangrove propagule. Okay. Mangrove propagules, this is the seed of the mangrove. They begin germination while they're still attached on the plant. Okay. So normally you'd have a seed about this size, but if you look at this mangrove prop propagule, it has about 12 or 14, 14 inches of growth. Okay. Now red mangroves are adapted because once the propagule falls in the water, they float around, and they can spend up to a year until they find a suitable place for them to begin growing. Okay. And they usually grow in places where there's not a lot of nutrients and there's not a lot of fresh water. So they have adapted and by beginning their first phase of life while still attached to the tree, it's going to be much easier. They're more resilient to all these harsh conditions. But even so, in conditions like these islands where you have severe erosion, it's very difficult for mango propagules to begin growing here. Okay? What usually happens, growth is going to begin, you're going to have some foliage, but you know, they're not going to be firmly attached to the substrate. Any small storm that comes, they can easily wash them away. So what we're doing, we're using the Riley encasement methodology that allows the propagule to become isolated and to grow within the encasement, so they have that protection. Okay, and what is the encasement? The encasement is this device. If you notice, it's a hollow device and it has a split. Okay, so they're they're placed in the substrate, about a total of 18 inches in the, in the substrate, and they have a couple feet above the elevation. Okay, so once we drop the mangrove encasement on the inside, they're going to begin growing on the inside of the encasement. After two years or something like that, it all depends on the amount of nutrients, it all depends on the environment, they're going to begin to emerge from the top of the encasement. Okay, so during that entire time, your, the water level, because of this split, is going to rise and fall, which is very important because mangrove propagules, they, they need to adapt to the salinity conditions and to the conditions of the substrate. Okay, and once they grow on the inside, you know, they're protected from waves, they're protected from wind, they're protected even from wildlife. Okay, and this encasement is not a permanent structure. As the stem begins to grow on the inside, right, it's slowly going to expand the encasement. Okay, and over time the encasement is going to split open. Okay. Once the encasement split open, the mangrove is already has a couple feet of root structure firmly in place and the foliage is going to be pretty strong. Okay. So now the mangrove is a resilient tree that's going to be able to withstand any storm or any water damage. Okay. So essentially now we're going to be able to establish these mangroves in areas where they will not naturally regenerate. Although the mangroves are very res resilient, okay, we need to ensure that we are as successful as possible. Okay? So when we go selecting propagules, here you have two of them are mature, two of them will begin growth. Okay? But we need to look for the larger, the most mature mangroves. And we've been through Mangelhalto, we've been through Spans, Savannah, and many other sites across Aruba. And we've tried to select the longest mangroves so that we can use, right? Because the longer they are, the more resilient they're going to be, okay? And at the same time, we have mangroves from, very, from various different areas and from various different trees. So we want to ensure that the mangroves that we introduce in this environment are diverse. So the idea about introducing mangroves in this site is we have severe erosion, okay? This entire area was one large island many, many years ago, okay? Natural regeneration might take decades, might take centuries, and the erosion is what's really winning. Okay. So by introducing the mangroves at this area, we expect to reinforce the little amount of sand that we still have. Okay. So if we reinforce it, it's going um, to be better for the erosion. And at the same time, we're going to have root structure that's going to create habitat and nurseries for marine life. If you notice the coral reefs close to the area, 
uh, they have many studies, they, they have a few studies from Aruba that show that the coral reefs close to man uh, mangrove areas have higher fish biomass and areas where the mangrove have been depleted. Okay? Um, at the same time, in the southernmost island, we have a few nests from, from, from a couple different birds, but they have to lay the eggs on the rocks, okay? which is normal for some species. But by introducing the mangroves, we're going to create canopy and habitat for a diversity of bird species. So, you know, some birds can lay the nest on the rocks. Some of them will be able to perch and lay nests in the trees. Okay. It also makes the um, aesthetic value of the island a lot more appeasing when you have, you know, rich trees. We expect this project be a model for sustainable development because we're using mangroves to reinforce the resilience of the island, at the same time creating hab habitat for the bird and enhancing you know, the natural marine life in the environment. Okay? So this is going to be a model that can be used in other countries to see what Aruba has done and to see how Aruba has come up with a model area of sustainable development. And we hope to expand these sites. But obviously there is a need for more awareness. Okay? And as part of an awareness, we're reaching out to the schools and we're trying to look at the partnership with Messengers of Peace to engage children as part of an educational project where we, and even today we're gonna have some of the children plant their mangroves, okay? They're gonna name their mangrove and they're gonna plant their specific mangroves. So 10 years from now, when these three are large, we're gonna bring them back and take pictures of them. And they're gonna have a better sense of ownership and pride in what they have done at this specific area. And we hope that that awareness program is gonna instill that same pride and awareness in other sectors of Aruba.